the first meeting of Augmented Reality Barcelona. Welcome to all people connected online. I know there are some people connected that I will do my speech in English. Or um, can do in Spanish or English. Feel free to do as, as you want. Okay, so for people who is the first time here in our meeting, who are from you, is the first time? Okay, great. Always we have new people, we have people who came before, that's great. So try to do, to know for your friends, some people you know that we are doing these meetings, it will be great for them also. So today the meeting goes about augmented reality and wearables. Not about all wearables, my speech is about augmented reality wearables so i think best of this kind of devices are glasses this is the main topic on my speech well why wearables you can see some studies about what are companies doing their investments mainly on entertainment of course but one of the biggest part of this cake is about wearables this is one of the most important things we need to know if we want to do some kind of business we need to know the focus more information is about what are people buying what are companies what are investors are making you can see that people mainly are buying devices for head, like glasses. This is the main of all. Mainly, probably next year will be watches, wrists, we don't know. But glasses are, at this moment, the most kind of wearables and probably most expensive than others. But investors are thinking also on software. This is another main topic. Well, I will show you some videos about this kind of concepts. <laughs> Intel. We are at the beginning of a new era. Personal computing is being redefined as the technology around us becomes a part of who we are. This is the wearable revolution. We put technology on our bodies to make ourselves better, to find a way to kind of move through the world and extend ourselves. Wearables are a manifestation of the tip of an iceberg. These devices present an opportunity to integrate the digital into the physical. With Make It Wearable, Intel will foster the conversation about wearable tech and inspire the next wave of voices and innovation that will drive the movement forward. Together, we have the potential to change the world, to fuse together innovation and technology and really push this emerging category forward. We have chips that do amazing things. We have software that can do things people never imagined. It's really a matter of just having the imagination to put those together. With Make It Wearable, you can bring your idea to the world and find the support to make it a reality. What's interesting is the way people can appropriate what's out there and remake it into what they need. There's some things that are really going to fundamentally change the way people interact with the technology. Wearables are about life. 
there's the potential of making people work together better. Make It Wearable is an opportunity for you to join the conversation about the future of wearable tech and to put your idea to the test. It's an extremely difficult challenge. But what can we create that people will love? We want to harness the best people on the planet and create something which blows the world away. <laughs> Okay, this is about a contest. Intel Make It World is a contest about ideas. Ideas about how people can create new concepts in wearables. Today I invite a company uh, called First Vision. They are not here because they have a new, another presentation in, out from Barcelona. But they were one of the finalists of this content contest. They are here. First Vision, the only one from Spain, finalist of the 10 in this. You can see a lot of ideas here. Next November 11th, we will know who is the final champion of this contest. I hope first vision we what is the contest? What is the contest about? The contest is about ideas of how we can create new wearables for people and developing including if it's possible the uh, chip called Edison from Intel. Intel provides uh, consultory with experts to the people who participate in this contest online. You can see more information on the links on the presentation I will share with you. Next, October, well, at the end of October, we have a meeting on Munich organized by Metario, is in Inside R. This is the most important conference in Europe each year and Meta organized as a company leader in this in this field. Of course, Moverio, you can see in the demos the Moverio glasses. Well I don't play the video, you know how the devices works. You can see the demos that um, Pera Roset Pera, is developing. More of you are developing on Moverio. And you can see some demo from his device. Sony uh, offers a new option from September 19. Is this device? is really difficult for software. So we know some experiences in this 
Okay, so geolocation it's more common in augmented reality application for glasses you can do it depending on the GPS place it on the glasses or on your mobile phone like Google Glass depends on the mobile well more devices infrared infrared is a device it's a new device from September or so about a Japanese company is powerful this device it's similar to Google Glass it's a um, one lens device and it, it comes with most of the specifications of Google Glass. First vision project. This company from Barcelona offers a first point of view, first person point of view in a this kind of suite. <laughs> not only about video it's more about health you can get metrics not only video this device uh, sends image in streaming in live streaming from the tree sends the image to the control panel in streaming well, they are one of the 10 finalists of this Intel contest, so it's a good project. I hope we can see this prototype here in the next meeting. I will invite them to show us. Well, of course, Google Glass, you know, this device, they are developing more applications, really cool applications, something like uh, sports, cooking, in the operation room, science. But one of the most coolest applications I found is this, caption, captioning on glass. This application was launched uh, last week. It's about how can, I, uh, how can I know what people tell me if I can hear, if I am a uh, man with disabilities of fear so I can see I can read your lips but I can know I don't know what you're telling me so from a device from an Android device you can speak in front of me the app on device can transcript my voice and I can see here the text it is really cool it works. It works. I tested this week. I installed on the device. I tried with myself, telling me something, <laughs> and it really works. It's a really good application. 
I like, especially I like these applications because our application for people, for these people with disabilities. We are working here in La Salle with blind people. Students from architecture are trying to explain how our buildings like Sagrada Familia, these kind of buildings to blind people through the first vision of Google Glass and telling some transcription to the speaker on the glass to the blind people. So we are working in this, in this way. Well, I'm really excited with this project with meta glasses, space glasses. We waited for one year long. You know, we are all waiting. We are where they will send the first devices they are sending. Finally, they presented this device on June on the AWE conference. And probably in two weeks, we will have one here. Some of you are also. No? No, no, just interested. Well, you will see next. In the next meeting, we will uh, see this device. The difference from the others is that it can capture, capture my motion in front. I can move my hands in front of me and I can interact with augmented reality. This is really cool. Google Glass can do also. You can include on the go software. If you go to the website on the go.com, this is a team that uh, has developed a software for Google Glass. If you install, you can send some comments using your hands in front of Google Glass. But the main difference with space glasses is that it's on 3D. You can interact with 3D augmented reality space with your hands. This is the most amazing device. From the from one year we're waiting and we are really excited. It finally comes. It's a quick starter. This was the first. Other wearables are Mio from Talmi Plus. We can interact with a bracelet that gets my movement, and I can send some comments to my glasses through the interaction with the bracelet. Well, I don't play the video. One of the last devices is the helmet, the smart helmet from Dacry. 
This is not the first helmet. I show you one year ago one helmet for uh, bikers. So this is uh, new stepping helmets. You can get from two cameras in front, two cameras in the back. You have a gyroscope, you have everything on the helmet, including two in, uh, uh, screens. They can work together or they can work separate to show you only in front or 3D models in front. Oh, it's interesting. Well, I can show you. This video is short. That's interesting. Dacry surprised everybody because they are a software company and suddenly they show, hey, we uh, have a new idea. We can develop a helmet. And everybody thinks, oh, it's a surprise. <laughs> so you were the software developers. But everybody has a chance to, to do uh, this kind of devices. So I invite you to start working in this line, in this direction. We are all companies. I think all people from the meeting today are from a company who has uh, interest in this field. Today we have two presentations, uh, David from FIOS and Mero from Tetemsa. They are developing uh, really amazing projects in this field and they will show you what is possible. And I think that's all for me. Well, one more company, Lemoptics, develop single screens for your devices. You develop a device and Lemoptics develops screens and software. Oh, one more slide. Yesterday, some new from Google. I discovered this, the Chinese screen project. It's a big starter project about small smart devices with several combinations. You can get a Google Glass <laughs> like this. You can create a stick. You can control robots with this. It's really curious. This. Oh, I love gadgets, but I also love tinkering. With Liz, Patrick, phones, watches, and smart devices, you're pretty much tied in with what they tell you to do. What if there's a way you can make your own smart watches or devices? Through the printed watch. Your platform, or really anything else you want. Tiny screen is a full color display the size of your thumb, so that you add visuals to almost anything. It's a new extension to the tiny window platform, a miniature Arduino compatible system that works just like little electronic Legos. By stacking different modules together, you can easily create electronic projects even with very sophisticated features. Tiny screen is less than each promise, it has a resolution of 96 by 64 pixels, 16 bit color depth, and a software controllable background. Four push buttons are included along the sides with things like menu navigation or control in the game. Out of the box, Tiny Screen supports a number of apps that require no software 
component at all. The smart watch app for tiny screen allows for beautiful timekeeping and supports communication with your Android or Apple smartphone using our configurable open source app. The video app lets you stream video at over 20 frames per second to tiny screen from a micro SD card. There's no limit how long the video can be, and an easy menu system lets you navigate and select the video you want to play. The video game app lets you play games, like Flappy Birds and Asteroids. And with the software library open source and available to everyone, we look forward to all types of new games for tiny screen being developed and shared. A lightning fast Arduino software library has been created that makes it simple for you to create your own tiny screen projects to do whatever you want. It includes. This is a new uh, kind of devices. We know there are really expensive watches, of course, but you can do something like this and you can rock the market with the same concept of wearables. They launched the, the Kickstarter and they have broke and they start working with this project. Well, that's all. Next, David, uh, please. I have a question. Uh, do you want me to present in uh, bad English or with Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> English? I try. I, I, I will mix with English and Spanish. Well, thank you very much for, for inviting us uh, to, to come here and explain our, our company. We are FIOS. We, are, we was a startup here in, in Spain from Barcelona. I studied here in, in La Salle. And mm -hmm. I started my company in 1999. I was the, the only employee. And uh, right now we are 160 people in five uh, offices. Uh, around Spain, uh, France, and also we have one person, just one person in Silicon Valley, in, in California, that he's, he, he is uh, getting uh, all the technology uh, very quick to us. So we are first steppers here in, in, in Barcelona. Um, uh, we are experts in uh, digital digital business. So everything in digital business, from the digital marketing, from the digital strategy, and also for development. Um, our, our history is right like this. Uh, we have, uh, I have a partner, uh, and he's the president, he's a well-known person here in Spain. His name is Didac Lee. It's very well-known here, and he's well-known here because he's also a member of the board of the Football Club Barcelona. He is the digital manager of football to Barcelona. So if anyone wants to go to the football, just yes, call me and <laughs> we will try to make some arrange. And uh, in 1998, another company was found by other people. And in the uh, 2012, we uh, make a fusion uh, because we wanted to have more seniority in our, in our company. So this is uh, an humility point of view because uh, we was the, the owners and we went to the market to find our chief. It's very strange, but we need seniority for, for, for developing everything we want to, 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 to have. And uh, we make, uh, as we are going to see, everything in the, in the digital market, but our strategy is uh, what you have here is uh, a strategy omnichannel. Omnichannel for us is to be always on web, to be mobile, it to be a smart TV. So every company who wants to develop a marketing plan, they have to be in the third, in in the, in the three, uh, in these three, three points right now. Also, wearable technology and Internet of Things. So people is going to be connect. Things are going to be connect. 
And this is a mess of data. So if you have a mess of data, you need to have a strong business intelligence area to, to have uh, to, to, to get value of this all this data because if not it's uh, just a mess you have to put it all in order and also have um, um, have value uh, of, of, the, of take advantage of this information uh, our business areas are the first one is uh, market, digital marketing and we work for big companies here uh, in the retail and in, in fashion in banking and the, the first company here we work for them so we have a, a big a big uh, area of development classical development and our mobile and web technology some communities commodities like uh, data center systems um, business intelligence and uh, we have a vertical for 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 uh, i want to 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 explain you uh, two or three of our projects in, in wearable technology. I, I am a Google Glass developer on Google Glass um, Explorer. And we have developed for, for La Caixa, it's a well-known banking here in, in Spain, uh, two, two, two apps. One of them is the, to, to find the offices. So if, if you have a um, a Google Glass, you can go everywhere, and always you are going to be noticed where is uh, an office of, of, of La Caixa. And also uh, uh, a cash, cash or currency converter. So you can go and see uh, one, uh, one in the supermarket, the prices, and immediately you can change with the, with the stock market with, uh, in, the, in the real time, that uh, you can see the new price you have. So that's uh, the, the main uh, parts for, for, for banking. Um, why this? Because uh, as you may know, uh, everybody don't, that's, don't have a uh, Google Glass in your hand. So if you make an app, nobody is going to be used. You know what I mean? So why, uh, why uh, big players wants to make these apps because they have a, a, an opportunity and probably uh, they can go to the, to, the, to the media and say that they are the first step of the pioneers on that. And then two things, uh, the reputation, you, mo you, 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 you know that the reputation uh, can be heredate, heredate, this is okay in English, heredate, no? Uh, it's a, like a legacy, you, you can get heritage, heritage um, because if Google Glass is innovation, <laughs> even you are not innovation, if you have an app and you are the first stepper, uh, people are going to look to you and say, okay, they are innovative also. So this is the first part. And the second part is uh, to, to, to go to the media. So uh, like I said, in, the, in this case, make a big marketing plan explain everybody that they want the first steppers in Google Glass. So they uh, they have this return of inversion because if they wanted to pay to pay to the media to, to, to have the announcement, it's going to be expensive, more expensive than having this uh, uh, this application. And also the the, the, the the biggest project in Google Glass we have made is uh, for Seat. Seat is a car factory here in, in, in Barcelona. And we are connecting and telecontrolling the car. So the first application, uh, as you may know, when your your car is, is broke, it's, it's not working, probably you have only one light on. But if you go to the, to the, uh, to the mechanical, they connect and they know all, uh, all things about the motor and engine and things like that. So the mechanicals have more information than the user. You know what I mean? So our application connects to the car and if you look to the light that is on, you can see everything that is happening with the car with uh, the history, all the history of the car. So you have the information, the professional information uh, uh, like like a user, uh, it's. Uh, I don't know if I I, I, I make you uh, I make understand myself. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> and the other is um, is uh, um, if you have the Google Glass, you can go around with a GPS and you can see um, uh, walking how to get to 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 a destination. So if you enter to a Seat, the Google Glass detect that is a Seat and change the route because they know now that you are on driving, not walking. So it's a, another important part. And also we can um, um, uh, manage the radio. You can manage the conditioned air. It is like only with, with the voice. That's the, the, the first spin we have in, in Google Glass. So this is our three projects. And probably say the project of SEAT is going to be uh, in the media uh, in the next weeks. And also we have uh, prototypes with with Internet of Things, in, in this case with beacons, you know what is iBeacon? The beacon, beacon is like, um, in Spanish is baliza. It's a Bluetooth, a little Bluetooth you can put everywhere. And uh, you can develop apps that can, it's, uh, that can connect with this and know where exactly you are. If you are inside a building, uh, I can know that I'm right here not one centimeter more in its direction, right here. So if I'm right here, I can get, if I am in a supermarket, I can, I can get some information and some offers to buy uh, uh, in, the, in, in the points. You can uh, put beacons in the monuments, so people who go to the mon monument, if um, you have an app, can give you more information. You don't need to recognize what's happening there. You only are near to the beacon. Uh, we are putting beacons also in the in the in the bus in the buses here in Barcelona, so handicapped people can uh, know with the app if the bus is coming. Uh, One hundred meter, five uh, fifty meters, so on is coming. We are putting also e beacons in the in the bus stops. So if you uh, you are in a bus, uh, you can be noticed if there is something interesting around you. So you can look to the right and you will see the Sagrada Familia and uh, more information on that. And also, if you get all this information, you can manage this information and have more information. So if you can uh, know where is the people to give information to everyone, uh, you can make in-store marketing. You can uh, make um, special offers to everyone different and also you can have uh, you can have a layout with hot spots where the people are so you can manage flow of people if there is a lot of people here you can send some offers over, over there and move the people you know we are making some experience with the people who comes by 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 sea in the, in the <coughs> cruceros in the, in the ships in the ships that are coming uh, the people who comes here to tourings go to the ramblas and probably the the mayor want, wants to put the people in Paseo de Gracia put the people every in, in other parts so we can manage people uh, giving special offers in some parts of the of the of the, of the city and also in restaurants and museums and things like that. Uh, the, the more easy, the, the easiest, easiest uh, application is in a museum, is changing the audio guide for um, an app. So the audio guide, if you rent the guide, like five euros, four euros, and you can uh, download your, your app for uh, half euro if you want. Uh, and you don't have to invest in having audio guides, uh, putting the, the uh, IV cons in, in everywhere. So this is our three projects, uh, three projects in Google Glass and this kind of projects in IV cons. IV cons is a really simple technology, very really simple technology. It's like uh, very uh, small, uh, small um, systems with Bluetooth. You can put everywhere the the, the battery. 
depends on the individual can can be like 10 years so you can put everywhere you want it's like one half euro each and what you have to to make is a, a root application with app with with the limited use imagina imagination what do you want to, to do it's a augmented reality for museums for Turing's for every uh, we are right now thinking in a new development development on that there is one big mission in the Belgium that is working with with iBeacons and here in Spain right now is still an the opportunity we are working on that. you have any questions uh, if not uh, here at the end of the, of the presentation we have our our email you want to, to send us this is the first time I come here I I, I hope to see you in the next one because it's really interesting on Isidro says and also the networking we are making here and, and all the devices that Isidro has over here every 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 session has news so <laughs> interesting thank you very much for listening to me excuse me for my thank you very much David uh, next presentation, uh, Nero from Cetexa. It's a leader company in developing projects around wearables and special. Well, uh, but, uh, we are at Technological Center. Yes. I apologize because uh, I, I had not prepared my my talk in, in English, and for the reason I, I would prefer to to do it in Spain. So, Anyway, uh, we can change the, the language in the interaction. The camera is One of the problems is one. No, gracias. Uh, primero a uh, Isidro y a la organización para habernos invitado. Siempre nos, nos, nos encanta, nos gusta mucho explicar qué proyectos estamos trabajando y cómo, nos, en definitiva, uh, desarrollamos nuestra, nuestra, nuestra actividad. Como he dicho antes, somos un centro tecnológico en Mataró, a 30 minutos de aquí de Barcelona, especializado en el concepto de Printed Electronics, electrónica impresa. Somos, uh, estamos en Mataró, en el Parque Tecnológico Tecnocampus. Tenemos una cartera de proyectos, una cartera de clientes multisectorial, pese a que hay algunos sectores más receptivos a, esta, a, a este tipo de tecnologías unos que otros. Pero en definitiva, como les he dicho, básicamente está, se trata de trabajar con el concepto de electrónica impresa, electrónica plana, electrónica flexible, para... Uh, añadir nuevas funcionalidades a productos, a superficies, a materiales. Cuando hablamos en, en definitiva de añadir nuevas funcionalidades, se trata de, de uh, añadir luz, uh, calor, uh, propiedades de sensorización ¿m? para desarrollar lo que podríamos decir tecnologías inteligentes, smart technologies smart products, smart materials, smart objects. ¿Sí? Un poco es, 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 es esta nuestra misión. Gráficamente, cuando hablamos de electrónica impresa, podríamos estar hablando de este tipo de electrónica. Aquí vemos los circuitos impresos, tanto en, en foil como en, como en, como en tejido. Uh, no les voy a aburrir con las características de, 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 de la electrónica impresa. Me gustaría centrarme básicamente en dos o tres conceptos. Cuando hablamos de electrónica empresa, estamos hablando de electrónica uh, plana, flexible, vestible, vestible uh, electrónica que somos capaces de imprimir 
en grandes formatos y por lo tanto estamos hablando de una electrónica barata, una electrónica low cost, tanto desde el punto de vista de su producción como desde el punto de vista de su integración. Esto nos abre también muchísimas oportunidades a la hora de crear nuevos productos, productos uh, que, en sus, que en sus ámbitos o en sus mercados de referencia pues crean un valor uh, añadido determinado. Estas son las características de, de la electrónica. Pues. Si les tuviera que presentar el centro tecnológico desde un punto de vista físico, veríamos básicamente tres espacios. Un espacio de, 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 de laboratorio donde a nivel de probeta cambiamos Uh, o añadimos las propiedades a los materiales, hacemos que se iluminen, hace, uh, hacemos que se calienten hace, e imprimimos sensores para que mon monitoricen. Pero realmente el, el, el verdadero cuello de botella, el reto uh, especialmente de, de, del centro tecnológico es hacer que estas tecnologías salgan del laboratorio y entren en lo que podríamos llamar una fase o un, un preescalado, una zona de upscaling, una zona de escala industrial. Seamos capaces de tirar metros de esta electrónica. Aquí realmente es el, el reto del, de, del centro tecnológico. ¿eh? Hay un, un tercer espacio, que es el, el espacio de ingeniería. Es allá donde ya parimos o, o creamos productos que en sus mercados de referencia, y hablo de la salud, hablo del deporte, de competición, hablo de, de temas más relacionados con el, con, con el fashion, con el fashion o hablo de, de, de quizá ropa de seguridad, ¿no? Pero, eh, aquí es donde realmente estamos en contacto más con la aplicación. Pero lo que es importante de ver también es que la electrónica impresa interactúa o se cruza o, 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 o se nutre de diferentes líneas tecnológicas en las cuales el centro, el centro tecnológico trabajamos. Temas de fotónica, a nivel de... Aquí, ven, por ejemplo, la impresión de electroluminiscencia sobre textil, el, el tema de, de, de printed sensors, la sensorización, de la impresión de sensores en diferentes tipos de superficie, abre muchísimas oportunidades, uh, en el, no solamente en temas de deportes, temas de rehabilitación, temas de salud invasiva, la, 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 la impresión de circuitos y componentes como tecnología, la bio, biofuncionalización de superficies, es decir, a, a hacer una superficie inerte, hacer la bio, hacer un diseño biológico que responda a un, a un determinado, a una determinada molécula, a un determinado uh, principio activo. Y una de las líneas tecnológicas o de las especializaciones que, que nos da más cancha es, es, es nuestra experiencia en tejidos o de alto rendimiento o, o smart, smart textiles. Uh, es decir, hacer que pasen cosas en el, encima del tejido como material. Esto ya avanza mucha o, 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 o realmente hace que, que bueno, mmm, podemos desarrollar nuestra aportación en el mundo de los huérebos, ¿no? Desde un punto de vista quizá diferencial a lo que hemos visto hasta ahora. Les he dicho, no les quiero aburrir, con, con, con el centro de les, les, les he dicho que hay algunas aplicaciones, algunos sectores más receptivos a este tipo de tecnologías. Pero en definitiva, como centro tecnológico, vamos a estar muy atentos al valor que estamos creando en, en esa tecnología. Es decir, si, 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 si no somos capaces de imaginarnos qué valor estamos creando en el usuario final, difícilmente podremos realmente uh, avanzar con proyectos de valor en este sentido. ¿no? Hmm. Estamos jugando también, les, les había avanzado antes también el concepto de añadir inteligencia o interacción a los materiales. En principio, aquí podríamos dibujar una, una bueno, no, no una cadena de valor, sino una, una, una secuencia entre smart materials, materiales inteligentes, smart devices, para producir smart objects, para crear smart products, pero en definitiva estamos año 2014, en el, en, el, en el periodo de crear soluciones o entornos inteligentes donde los usuarios, los objetos, los productos, hablen entre ellos. ¿no? Y, y creo que, que, que la electrónica impresa aquí puede hacer, uh, puede, puede trabajar mucho en favor de esto. Como centro tecnológico estamos 
o estábamos muy acostumbrados a hablar o interlocutar o fijarnos o focalizar nuestros esfuerzos en la tecnología. Uh, les, uh, creo que es un buen momento para presentarles un trabajo que hicimos el año pasado y lo hemos, re uh, y, y, y lo hemos uh, reeditado este año, que es uh, nuestra capacidad de, o, o hemos intentado desarrollar o, 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 o enriquecernos de puntos de vista diferentes a los que es el... Uh, básicamente el, el, el punto de vista tecnológico. ¿no? Nos dábamos cuenta que, que solo mirando la tecnología o cómo avanza la tecnología, difícilmente creábamos proyectos, soluciones de valor. Entonces, eh, hicimos un trabajo o, o, o intentamos mirar a la sociedad o interpretarla desde un punto de vista diferente o, o fijarnos en, en aspectos que no estábamos acostumbrados a hacer. Es por ello para avanzar un poco en... en el concepto de, de complejidad, ¿no? Complejidad. Nos, nos damos cuenta que somos o estamos delante de sociedad a, a, hiperconectada, ¿eh? 24 horas al día, 7 días por semana, somos individuos acostumbrados a no hacer solamente una cosa, sino que hacer varias a la vez. Hmm. Hay franjas o sectores de edad que nos, que, que, que nos ofrecen muchas oportunidades de crecimiento a través de nuevos productos y nos fijamos también en la salud como en un elemento absolutamente diferencial de nuestro día a día, de, nuestro, de, de, de nuestra cotidianidad. ¿Sí? A partir de aquí, perdón, Albert, pero no era un PowerPoint para presentar en el de esta manera, a partir de aquí, hacemos un ejercicio el año pasado de mmm, fijarnos en la, en la tecnología, pero fijarnos también en lo que podríamos decir, en, en las aplicaciones de esta tecnología, pero además ponernos gafas de uh, macro tendencias de, de diseño. Esto nos abre muchas oportunidades uh, a la hora de, 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 de ver qué se está haciendo a nivel mundial Uh, y quizás son prototipos, quizás son los conceptos, pero nos dan muchas ideas para de, de dónde avanzaban las tecnologías desde el punto de vista de la electrónica empresa. Es un, un, un report que está en nuestra web y a su disposición, ¿eh? porque realmente es, es, bueno, al menos nos, nos gusta utilizarla como una herramienta de, de innovación y de diseño, o al menos de inspiración de nuevas, de nuevas ideas. Y este año reeditamos el mismo trabajo, pero añadiendo dos drivers que lo hacían diferente. Un driver es uh, nuestra capacidad de imprimir o de hacer que pasen cosas encima del tejido. ¿Mm? Otro driver es uh, todas estas aplicaciones focalizadas en el individuo. ¿Mm? Repito, es un, uh, este también es un informe que está a su disposición. He traído algunos flyers que, 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 que les harán ir más directamente a través del QR. Pero, pero básicamente es un trabajo que les invito a conocerlo y que verán las potencialidades de, 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 de la electrónica empresa precisamente en un entorno web. ¿Mm? Uh, reconociendo sobre todo um, algunos drivers, hemos, hemos intentado trabajar con esta hiperconectividad que les comentaba antes, reconociendo que somos individuos conectados siete días por semana, 24 horas del día, uh, asumiendo que son productos de alto, de alto o aplicaciones de alto crecimiento de mercado, mm, reconociendo también que cualquier solución wearable creaba, creará valor a partir de que seamos capaces de combinar diferentes tipos de tecnología, realidad aumentada también, ¿sí? haciendo nuestra aportación, reconociendo también que, que el estado del arte del 2014 en cuanto a electrónica impresa uh, mm, seremos capaces de diseñar buenas soluciones Uh, si somos capaces de, de, de trabajar con electrónica híbrida, es decir, combinando soluciones de electrónica, de, hay algunos componentes que pueden ser impresos hoy, 
hay otros componentes que han descerebrizado. En la medida que seamos eficaces uh, creando dispositivos uh, a través de esa integración, seremos capaces de ya transmitir el valor en el mercado. ¿no? Y, rec y reconociendo también, y aquí es uh, lo que creemos que puede ser diferencial, el toque soft de los dispositivos wearable. Es decir, lo que hemos visto hasta ahora y ya lo hemos visto en los ejemplos que han sido mostrados, creo que hay un, un importante componente hard de todos los, los devices que, que se están creando. ¿no? A través, si somos capaces de, de, de transmitir o de, o, o de hacer que en la ropa pasen cosas, ¿sí? y no, no solamente en relojes, en, 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 en viseras, en, en diademas, ¿sí? en la ropa mismo, pues también crearemos nuevas, nuevas expectativas de mercado. Este es realmente el... el bueno, yo, yo creo que es la aportación, humilde aportación, pero diferencial, que a través de la tecnología de electrónica de empresa y Smart Textiles puede dar a los clientes de electrónicos. Les invito, nada más, no quiero alargarme en este asunto, les invito a, a que lo consulten, a que naveguen en, en él y, en definitiva, que, que les inspiren nuevas soluciones. Hay, hay también un apartado de, conclusio, de conclusiones y lecciones aprendidas, que, que puede ser también enriquecedor por su parte. Nada más, estoy a su disposición para cualquier pregunta al respecto. Sí. Eh, ¿Es lavable? La tengo, la... Se trata de que lo sea. ¿Pero ahora mismo? Depende, del, depende de la solución. Uh, es el, muy... ejemplo, había, mostraba un proyecto de una camiseta que como que daba calor para... Una, una, una prenda te, ten, eh, técnica. ¿no? Hemos, hemos de trabajar con el concepto de laminar, de proteger uh, las prendas o, o, o al menos los dispositivos electrónicos, la electrónica que acompaña. Trabajamos con este concepto de, de, de laminación ¿sí? y trabajamos con el concepto de, uh, de quitar y poner uh, baterías, fuentes de alimentación o cosas que no sean susceptibles de, de, de mojar. Pero, pero, pero no estamos trabajando ya con dispositivos que son lavables. ¿Y habéis desarrollado algo que pueda la, eh, mojarse por el mar, con la sal? ¿O es inviable? No, no es que sea inviable, pero tendríamos que centrarnos en la solución. Y hemos... ¿Cuántos habéis investigado en ese sentido? No, no, no. No recuerdo que tengamos ningún proyecto de, de, de estas características. Pero no lo recuerdo. Pero en cualquier caso... Uh, es una, es, es, es una fase del, del proyecto en sí. La, 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 bueno, pues, pues hacer o vencer. Nosotros como centro tecnológico hemos, hemos de, 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 de hacer las dos cosas. Hacer que avance la tecnología en un sentido, pero después poderlo aplicar al mercado. Todo dependerá del tipo de aplicación. ¿Tienes algún ejemplo práctico de algo que se haya Tú has indicado un proceso, ¿no? Que sigue en la investigación, luego de llevar a cabo, de llevarlo al mercado. ¿Tienes algún producto, un ejemplo, un producto sí, que se haya que llevado a cabo todo este proceso? Básicamente las tecnologías con las que estamos trabajando, más maduras y que, bueno, en definitiva, que ya tiramos metros de ellas, están en un proceso de escalada industrial, estamos hablando de tejido electromedicente, ya está en el mercado, ¿eh? tejido ele electromedicente, que... No, no, no he traído ninguno, pero que ustedes se dan cuenta. Eh, ahí eh, ya se trabaja hace mucho tiempo con el electromedicente flexible, pero no textilizado. ¿eh? Eso, es un, eh, eso es una tecnología que ya somos capaces de tirar metros. Otra tecnología que somos capaces de tirar metros es el tejido calefactable. A través de diferentes tipos de, de, de tecnología, ¿eh? bordado o tejido, o incluso impreso. Estamos trabajando en, en plantillas en plantillas para los zapatos con, con, con calefactores impresos, no tejidos. Estas es quizás las tecnologías. Después, uh, también están en, en, en fase industrial uh, toda una serie de sensores, uh, sensores de movimiento, extensiométricos, ¿sí? para, para aplicaciones vinculadas a la rehabilitación. Eh, la rehabilitación, uh, si, si usted lo compara con la medicina, ha avanzado muy poco si lo compara con la medicina, pues este tipo de wearables 
pueden aportar... Uh, fíjese, fíjese usted, estamos hablando de soft, pero, pero, pero es básicamente el hard, ¿eh? es, es intentar sensorizar toda la parte de una, una ortesis o un, o un, ¿no? para desubicar la rehabilitación, para objetivarla, para... Estamos trabajando muy intensamente en este tipo de proyectos. En packaging. Podemos estar trabajando tanto en iluminar el producto en sí, en enfatizar eh, las calidades del producto. Vamos a, vamos, vamos a topar ahí el tema de costes, ¿eh? Pero en cualquier caso, nosotros como centro tecnológico, uh, iluminar el producto en, el, en, 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 en una estantería, en un lineal. O podemos estar a, a hablando ya de, de, de marcadores, de, por ejemplo, de, de, de fin de uso de producto, de, 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 de caducidad. ¿sí? O de o que nos descubran que, que un determinado... Uh, alimento no está en condiciones o está... Ahora hay, hay cervezas, ¿no? Que te dicen si están frías o no, cambiando por, de color. Por ejemplo. ¿no? Sí. Y toda esta tecnología lleva... lleva es, ¿Es necesario que lleve fuente de alimentación? ¿Baterías o, o no? Sí, es necesaria que lleven fuente de alimentación y aún no hemos podido imprimirla, la fuente de alimentación. Sí que podemos, hemos podido imprimirla, pero hemos conseguido unos rendimientos realmente muy bajos y poco, poco competitivos. Por tanto, es uno de los challenge, es uno de los, de los handicaps, uno de los retos con los que hemos de, de jugar la integración, la, 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 mmm, contar con este tipo de, de, de handicap, la fuente de alimentación, en función de la prenda, no es lo mismo alimentar una, una, una cazadora que, un, que ropa interior desde el punto de vista de la fuente de alimentación, ¿eh? donde la podemos esconder o donde la... Pero vaya, somos personas que vamos 24 horas del día con una fuente de alimentación encima, también, ¿no? El teléfono. Eh, verán ustedes que el, que el informe, el rapport, es un, es un viaje a, a la inspiración. ¿eh? Verán ustedes como el cuerpo humano... Uh, puede crear esta energía, puede almacenarla, puede, puede realmente, no, nuestras constantes vitales también pueden, pueden realmente, realmente ser una, una fuente de, de energía determinada. En definitiva, lo que hemos intentado es hacer visible esta tecnología, pero también que ustedes la puedan utilizar a nivel de, de, de herramienta. Estamos trabajando también en estamos trabajando también con el concepto. Fíjense ustedes que hasta el momento hemos hablado, quizá no lo he destacado, pero de un tratamiento o, o de actuar de manera superficial en, encima de los materiales. Pero en definitiva estamos, estamos en el concepto de print, más que printed printing, ¿no? De, Aquí es donde realmente tenemos aquí esta referencia o estamos trabajando, el concepto de imprimir. Pues en el concepto también de imprimir uh, o de sensorizar o hacer que pasen cosas en, a través de, de, por ejemplo, la impresión en 3 uh, Imprimir también uh, o, o sensorizar material. Lo estamos haciendo a, a través de diferentes técnicas. La serigrafía realmente nos da mucho, mu, mucha, mucha cancha. Inge también, pero también estamos haciendo los primeros trabajos de prototipaje en 3D, en sensorización en 3D. Fíjense ustedes que la electrónica impresa es, es, es potente en la medida que seamos capaces de aprovechar tecnologías, técnicas de impresión que hoy están en el mercado, que hoy, que hoy son industria. ¿Eh? Materiales que al imprimirlos sean técnicamente sensibles, que puedan plataformas después de haberlos impreso. Estamos trabajando con sensores térmicos uh, y materiales también de, de no sé si refieres, te refieres a memoria de forma, sí. bueno, que, que uh, podemos uh, inducirle a través de electrónica impresa un calor para que, que, 
eh, modifiquen, su, modifiquen su forma al servicio de una aplicación. Formaría parte de, de, de esta quinta línea tecnológica ¿no? de, que, 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 que la... Que la, que, que la llamamos high performance textiles, ¿no? Y, y dentro de, de, de estos tejidos de alto rendimiento están materiales también de, 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 de memoria de forma. Estamos trabajando también con, con, a través del textil de producir diferentes tipos de composites sensorizados para aplicaciones relacionadas con la a, a, automoción, aeronáutica, nos dan... Nos, sus materiales también nos, nos da muchas posibilidades también. Sí. Mi es Emiliano. Emiliano es now in class is it was the last presentation but it was impossible uh, they are from the department of the research and development at the engineering area of uh, la salle and they are uh, offering uh, masters and postgraduate uh, courses on this on wearable technology and related technologies like like interactive Uh, products and interactive projects like uh, they like to tell seamless interaction the seamless interaction is about how objects can interact with people well I can show you one of these projects in a video instead of Emiliano All the presentations today and the video of the conference is available on YouTube. We are sharing online this video to people connected. You will see this conference uh, online. Well, uh, This is the department from La Salle here, where you can find all information about these projects and research. We have these research areas, especially the human computer interaction. Here you can find these projects. Seamless interaction. For example, the Q box. We are entering a new technological era that holds great promise. The emergence of augmented reality as a new interface to interact with our environment allows us to introduce virtual data into the real world. Moreover, every year, the number of devices connected to the internet increases exponentially, which leads to the fact that hundreds of smart objects are sending data back and forth to the cloud per system. These two powerful concepts are now arriving to a convenient convergence. And this is a starting point of smart avatars. Smart avatars presents the idea of using augmented reality as an interface to interact with smart objects. Using a mobile device to the augmented reality, we can show the functionality of the smart object or generate new interactions. The concept focuses on the idea of defining new interfaces of an actor. One of the applications we have developed is Qbox. Qbox is an entertainment and educational product for children, consisting of a little cube robot a toy figure and a mobile device of the patient. The kid can interact with the cube through the augmented reality displayed on the device. First of all, the kid has to introduce the little figure into the cube. When the AR is displayed, the character will appear inside the cube and will become alive. 
the kid will be able to see the character inside the cube and interact with it. Any type of application can be developed using this new way of interaction, and a relation is created between the kid and the character that is in the medium to interact with the cube. Lots of different figures can be chosen. The cube will know which figure is introduced at each moment, and the character will be displayed inside. Another way of interaction is the possibility to move the cube to the character. The kid can see how the character interacts with the cube and can produce a physical effect over the cube. For example, making the cube move in one direction. Moreover, if the kid holds the cube on his hands, the gravity effect acts over the figure. If he tilts the cube, the figure moves from one side to another. Cubebox is a new toy that validates the new interaction model generated by smart avatars. We try to push up the concept of human-computer interaction to a new level. The user can interact with smart optics for a new type of interaction, including a real human-like avatar. So with smart avatars, we're making interaction more natural, easier, and completely adapted to our needs. Uh, this project was developed with the MIT Department of the Massachusetts University. And now, at this moment, one of these students, Judith, is working there for an stage, developing more projects in this field. One more project is about Flexo. It's really amazing. <laughs> Well, this is one more project about how can we connect objects with the internet and create experiences between them and us. It's not only about objects, it's about how we interact with objects through internet. Well, we can know this augmented reality, probably. I think augmented reality is not only about viewing avatars and this kind of technology. Augmented reality thing is how we expand our senses. How can I can see something else. How can I hear something else? This is what I think is a augmented reality technology. Maybe I'm wrong, or maybe you have another opinion about that. We can talk about this if you have some suggestion or <laughs> well that's all for today. If you are invited to the next we will talk on November, first days of November, about augmented reality and smart cities. How can we interact with the big scale, with the big dimensions of our cities? I know, and you probably know that November is one of the most active months about this in Barcelona because we have a conference, an uh, international conference, and most of the most uh, important companies that are developing interaction with our cities will be in Barcelona, and we will have a chance to invite them to come to our meeting. Maybe you know some of them. You can invite. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm.
So you can help us to do these meetings more active. And please, if you have or if you want to do a presentation next meeting, or do you have an idea to do some presentation? Do you have some gadget to show them? Well, you can do it. These meetings are made for you by you. That's that's all. And I hope you meet together, not maybe not here, maybe you can exchange your cards and you can meet all your contacts from the meetup. We are more than 350 people in the group on meetup.com. Now we are one of the most active groups in the internet. You can find there in the web page all our presentations for the previous meetings. We have done 